A recent PBS NewsHour report shows there are still lines for bottled water in Flint, even after the water supply has been switched and new lines are being installed across the city. Greater Holy Temple Church of God in Christ hands out more than 1,700 cases a week. Medical programs are tracking and treating children with lead exposure from the water crisis. There are early literacy programs in schools, home visits for support. But there is unease about the recovery and trusting what comes out of the tap. Stephen Henderson recently had a conversation on WDET Public Radio with Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, the pediatrician who first sounded the alarm about lead levels in children. She's written a book about what happened in Flint and is a crucial part of the recovery process. There was a blindness towards Flint. People literally closed their eyes, even when they knew something was wrong, and they looked away. And what I hope that this you know, book and this story conveys is really kind of our, our obligation to open our eyes, to not be so myopic, uh, to have a, you know, a different level of empathy and understanding to our neighbors, um, and to open really each other's eyes. We were very deliberate to make sure that we wanted science to lead our recovery. Um, and, and in terms of how we move forward, we couldn't take away this crisis. There's no like magic pill or no antidote. This crisis was also not just specific to lead, uh, Legionnaires outbreak where people died from pneumonia, skin issues, but also this broader kind of betrayal and these feelings of, uh, you know, loss of trust and anger and guilt. All those also lead to poor outcomes. This was like a big population level trauma. Um, so we have also leaned on the emerging science of, of trauma, of trauma and from care, of child development, of early adversity, of brain plasticity, this really holistic response that we've been able to put into place in Flint, um, especially for our youngest children, um, it, it, towards the recovery. So we kind of created all this long list of demands of what we wanted from the state, from the feds, from philanthropy, leaning on this science of child devel development, things like um, you know early on home visits and high quality childcare and nutrition access and expanded Medicaid and WIC and all these things that we have been able to put in place in Flint. And that is all based on what the science tells us promotes the development of children. And when I was able to lean on that science, like here's Dr. Mona as a pediatrician and as a scientist um, sharing what needs to be done, I felt that I was able to get more of that mm. rather than here's somebody who's really angry and you know, you know, bangs her head at night because of what happened. Um, but when you lean on the science, I, I, I felt that we were more um, likely to get things to happen and, and more likely to get bipartisan support. Yeah. You know, the story of Flint, so many people think it's a story of like, oh, this is government failure. Like this is government failure at literally every level of, of government. Um, but for me, the story of, of Flint is really very much of, of how government can work for you. Um, so Flint lost democracy. So we had no like locally elected officials. But the, the folks that were elected, like Senator Ananick, like our state rep, our congressional delegation, Congressman Kildee, Senator Stabenow Peters, they never stopped fighting for Flint. Um, and they reaffirmed to me what good government can be. So that was also very much reaffirmed. Um, but something that, that changed kind of throughout this process, I used to think uh, as a pediatrician, like we kind of had a monopoly on caring for children. Like, I mean, like who else cares about kids like more than pediatricians? Um, and that I was proven wrong time and time and time again, because this story is not about one person. This story is about a team. Um, it is about this amazing team of folks that came together via serendipity or not, um, that couldn't have been more different than each other, that were from so many different disciplines and walks of life that came together and because they didn't accept the status quo and they wanted to make things better for kids.